It's another Open the Box lunch segment. And today we have some AL8 and we have a spicy tuna salad, Caesar salad, uh, all ingredients from Aldi, if you're so inclined. And today we're going to open the box on a Chromecast with Google TV, just recently released, brand spanking new. It has all of these uh, apps available so that you can watch pretty much anything on this device. It uh, discovers 700,000 plus movies and shows. Simple setup, plug, connect, stream, do it all. And uh, the setup is what I'm really interested in today. We're going to take a look at that setup process. And uh, hey, Google is built into that. So we have the Google Assistant. So we're going to open this up. And while I'm opening this up, reminder, I have Roku's, Android TVs. I have Apple TV. I have every streaming device I think you can probably purchase right now. So right now I'm just struggling to get this silly box open. How do we, oh, there it is. It's a lift up, a uh, little tip for those of you that uh, get one of these. There we go. And inside we have great two more boxes. This should be the Chromecast dongle. And these do look a little bit different than the Chromecast Ultra, which has been on the market for some time. And again, this is the Chromecast, but it includes the new Google TV. And we'll be talking about that as we go. And you'll get a demonstration. It's a slim little puck looking module. It's got the little Chromecast logo there on the back. We can see HDMI, got the FCC stuff. And it looks like we have reset button right Let's see, right there, yeah, I think that's a reset button, and then we have a little activity light. Let's look in box number two, obviously going to be the remote. I'm anxious to see the remote. Uh, we're gonna compare remotes here a little bit later, uh, but the remote seems to be getting some good reviews online. People like the remote, so we're gonna pull that out. Very nice packaging, as always with Google, and uh, this has almost a, uh, a cloth sleeve feel to it instead of a cheap plastic, that's pretty nice. And here we go, here's the remote. Very comfortable in the hands. We have our volume buttons up and down. We have uh, some custom buttons. We have power. We have a input button for your TV, Netflix button, YouTube button, home button, mute button, Google Assistant button, which will be very handy, and our back button as well as our kind of a directional control and select button. Very nice, like this remote. Oh, it does have IR so that we can control another device besides the Chromecast with Google TV. Taking a look at the manual here, everything we need to get started, um, pretty basic stuff here. Uh, you will need the Google Home app to set this up, so be prepared for that. And uh, here's a little uh, description of what the remote will do, what's included in the box, and we're gonna finish that up as we open the box and see what else is inside the box. Before we do that, let's take a look at our warnings, make sure we don't cause fires in our house, good to go, good enough. Remainder of the box, we do have power, this is a USB power plug, so we'll plug that in. And on the other end, I do believe the cable is USB-C, as it should be, as all modern devices should be. Shame on anybody who's selling something that's not USB-C. You'll see that plugs in nicely there, and we're going to get it right either way we plug it in. Doesn't matter if we go up, down, left, or right. It's going to work in that plug. Underneath, don't forget to pull underneath. That's where your batteries are. You're going to need those. And uh, these are some cheap, uh, wow, just white batteries. I'm not sure who the brand is, but they're... Probably gonna work fine for our use. We'll find our little thumb guide there, pull that off and place our batteries in. It goes one direction, good to go. Put the top back on and hey, there we go, light, we have power. Again, just really like this remote, feels good in the hand. Man, can't wait to try this. All right, so let's move that aside. And here's what you get in the box. Here's everything in the box. Yep, time to take a drink with the Chromecast with Google TV and I'm hungry. I'm gonna take a break now and then we're gonna come back and fire this thing up for the first time. Before we do though, I wanna let you know my setup. I did connect this up to a Cloner Alliance Box Pro and this is how I'll be capturing our video going forward. Okay, lunchtime is over and I had some time later on in the afternoon to go ahead and fire this up. We're gonna pair our remote with the Chromecast. That was easy. Uh, let's select our language, English at least for today. And then we're gonna move over to that Google Home app. I mentioned that earlier that you're gonna need that. We're gonna scan this barcode. So I know that you're going to want to see that process. So what I'm gonna do is uh, break open my Pixel 4 XL. We're gonna load the Home app. And uh, I want you to see what happens on the screen. So here you see the Pixel 4 with the Home app. We found the device, it's looking for it. Now this is where we get to scan that barcode. You can see that scanned. And now it's making the connection between the Home app Google and the Chromecast with Google TV. Follow the instructions in the Google Home app. 
We have done that. Okay, we're going to accept all these fun license. Let's pick where this device is. This is gonna be in my office for now. Let's give it a name. I don't wanna name it Office TV. I wanted to call it Google TV. Now, some of this has been sped up, so uh, hopefully you will note that. It's not this fast loading everything. Okay, we're signing into our Google account. I verified it's me. Uh, signing into the Chromecast. I'm not gonna give you my password, so you're not gonna see that. We'll move on from there. We're signed in. It is a pretty, it's a pretty quick process, and you see we have some services we need to agree to if we want to do that. Recommendations, here's how your information will be used to create recommendations, and it does actually a good job of making recommendations, so you'll want to do that if you want that feature. Google Assistant is built in. You can search across all your TV apps, including Netflix and Amazon Prime. Uh, my voice is already in the system, so we're just going to move that over to this device as well. And here's our personal results with voice. I like that. And here are the applications by default. Now, you can select more applications, as you can see later. I'm going to go ahead and add Peacock and YouTube Music. Those are two that I use. But you can't remove some of the defaults. We'll have to do that manually, and we'll take care of that a little bit later. All right, I'm choosing Google Photos pictures for my ambient mode of my family. So when we're in our screen saving device uh, or mode, it will uh, show pictures of my family. So it looks like setup is complete at this point. Now we're going to set up our remote to control, in my case, a Vizio television. So this is just a cheap little television I have set up. Point the Chromecast remote at the TV. To do the, yep, it is working. There we go, turn that off. Next, we'll set up the power. That's done, I went ahead and did that for us. We're gonna bypass this process. All right, now it's going to install the apps. I have sped this up significantly. Watch the bouncing balls as they go flying across the air while we wait for the apps to install. All right, adding the finishing touches. Start exploring, here we go. Now we're gonna to get to take a look at this new interface that is Google TV, which is a revamp of Android TV. So I'm excited to see this. I have the Mi Box currently set up. So here's the Mi Box and you can compare it with the Chromecast with Google TV built in. The Mi Box is really a great Android TV. It's probably my favorite Android TV, possibly before this device was released. They're inexpensive. You can find them at Walmart, Best Buy, many places. Here's a comparison of the remote. This is the Mi Box remote. This is the new uh, Chromecast remote. And admittedly, I really like the new remote better. Although there's nothing wrong with that old remote. It does a very nice job and has a good microphone built in. So there's a comparison. This is the interface. This is what we are met with when we first turn it on. And again, it is very similar to Android TV if you've been using that which I have with the Mi Box. Let's go ahead and work our way through the settings. So you can see I already have it connected to my network. I've already done that for us so that you didn't have to watch that process. And you see some of the settings that we have here. We can manage our services, turn those on, turn them off, depending on which service. And those are those default ones that you saw earlier. Set up our payments and purchases. I've already done all of that. Look at apps mode only. And then, of course, we can remove our account if we want to give this device. Interestingly, my picture finally popped up. It wasn't in there originally, so I'm glad my profile picture is in there. We do have some privacy settings. I would encourage you to look at those. Uh, some of you may want to turn some of those off. I've pretty much given Google my life at this point, so they're all on. Here's our app section, our system setting. If we go into system, you see we have some accessibility, storage, energy saver, ambient mode. We do have our Chromecast mode in there. We can change that. This is I was interested in because I think I will later on connect a Bluetooth joystick because you can play games with this as I will demonstrate in just a little bit. Now I wanna go into search and try out the new assistant. What's the weather? Right now in Columbus, it's 76 degrees and mostly sunny. Today, it'll be partly cloudy with a forecasted high of 78 and a beautiful day for a run. So perfect. So you can still use all of your standard Google Assistant's uh, features. So here's some free movies. Uh, anxious to see how it selects free movies. Some of these are not necessarily free. You still have to have a service, but at least it says it knows that these are free for you now because you pay for the service. And you'll see some other things that we can do within the search. Oh, what's the latest Current news? news. Ah, so that goes right into the live CBS News. That's good. Why didn't the melons get married? I don't know. Why didn't they? Because they cantaloupe. Oh, my. So even the bad features of the Google Assistant are built in. Actually, that's a lot of fun. All right. Here's some new movies. This is what's available now. 
And this is as of early October 2020. Now this looks interesting, 3022. And you can see I can watch it now using Netflix, the trailer playing in the background. Why may have shorted on your end? Ooh, three ways to watch. So if we click that, that'll say we can watch it on Netflix and Google TV, we can rent or we can purchase. So that's a nice feature. So it gives you options for how you wanna watch it. Uh, I haven't watched it yet, but I could thumbs up if I did. And I'm going to add that to my watch list because I would like to see that later. You'll see that watch list come into play a little bit later through our demonstration today. Now let's go to for you. What's for me? What's what's in it for you? What's in it for you? Me? What's, uh, oh, okay. These are the things that it thinks I'm going to like based on my subscriptions, things that have been watched by anybody else who's watched something on this device. You can see I'm a big DC fan. We just wa recently watched Superman Returns. Uh, so I'm going to say watched it. I'm going to thumbs up it because it wasn't as bad as what people really say it was, Wait, quite honestly. Go. And if you want to watch it, you can use Netflix, Google TV, uh, rent or purchase. So 75% on Rotten Tomatoes. So good information there to help you make up the decision about what you want to watch. Now, here's what I like, the live TV. It used to be you had to go into the YouTube TV app, but now we have live TV. By the way, Red Dust Four, is a very TCM. interesting film to watch. It's a pre-code film. You should really check it out. Gene Harlow. Uh, it's a great film. It's a lot of fun to watch if you're into old films and TCM is obviously the place you want to go for old films, right? I like the suggestions. This may make it easier to find something to watch instead of me having to go to individual apps. I like the way that it kind of brings all those apps together in the availability of what's available, including TV shows. And you can see some of the TV shows that it thinks I'm going to like have watched The Expanse, haven't finished it, would like to do that. And that's available on Prime Video. Two ways to watch is you can buy the episodes or you can watch it on Prime Video again. Here's Prime Video, there it is, perfect, ready to go. Now I'm beyond episode one, so I'm not sure why it went there. Uh, we'll figure that out later. Let's go ahead and exit the app. That's one thing I don't understand with this. You do have to exit, you don't have to exit the app, but it does provide a way to exit instead of just multitasking. Here is where we can add additional apps. And you can see when you can search, how about Pluto TV? Here's Pluto TV on the Google Play Store. Pluto TV, of course, being a great source for live TV. No way to record things, but there are some movies uh, on demand as well. Now, let's play a game. I wanted to see if this thing was a, a good games player, so I'm going to go ahead and have Pac-Man loading in the background while we try check out some other applications that are available. All right, let's... You see a keyboard there. You don't have to just use the microphone. You can also use a little keyboard that's built in. Here's some tools. I do want to load a tool. I want to see what my speed test is. That's always handy to have. See if I have any uh, clogs in my internet connectivity. I do. I am running this right now on Wi-Fi using uh, Google Wi-Fi, as a matter of fact. Here are the things that are new in the library. I just recently purchased these two movies. I didn't have them digitally, but uh, found a great sale, $9.99 at Google uh, Play Store, which is now Google TV, I think is what they're calling that. Here's some other movies that I own that I typically find on special and I just kind of impulse buy them, quite honestly. I just say, hey, I want to watch that again. I rarely pay full price for any of these. Shazam. Good movie, by the way. Here's just another example of how quickly things load, the screen quality. And the interface. I think uh, most people watching this are probably really just interested in this interface. Love the enable binge watching. Binge watching and turn that on. It'll automatically go to something else. And the info cards. Info cards are interesting because what it should happen is as we pause a location. So let me pull a place where we have an actor. This will work. Uh, if we pause here, it should tell us who that actor is. And it does that under Google Play on Android TV, but I haven't been able to get the Chromecast with Google TV to do that yet. So maybe that's one that they need to bake in a little bit more. Spotify, I don't use, need to get rid of that. Speaking of that, how do we uh, move these things around? Well, that's how we move them around. We click on it and we move it to where we want it. So that's how we can arrange our apps. So let me go ahead and do a little rearranging here of some applications. You get all my YouTubes together. So YouTube TV, YouTube, and YouTube Music, and then Netflix. So basically, this is the priority of my watching and uh, experience using apps on Android TV and Google TV now. We're going to play a retro game called Pac-Man 256 that I found in the App Store, and I thought it would work really well with that joystick remote that we have, that direct with those directional discs. It's got the uh, good classic Pac-Man music, and I'm a big retro uh, games fan, retro computer fan. If you don't believe me, just check out my channel, by the way. Make sure you subscribe while you're watching me play Pac-Man 256 here, and uh, check out those uh, that like button down there. Hit that like button, and again, check out a lot of other videos I have on retro computing and and retro Commodore projects. I just recently had a really cool project where I 
created a modern data set for a Commodore Plus 4. If you even know what I just said, you'll love that video. Now, let's go back in and uh, let's check out all of our apps. Looks like some other ones loaded. Let's do a quick speed test. You remember I loaded the internet speed test app a little bit earlier. Everything uh, works nicely in the background while other apps are loading. I really like that. Let's see, let's test my speed here. I am on Comcast. And I have a spouse who's upstairs online in Zoom meeting. So I've got some pretty good connectivity right now. Thank you, Comcast, for that. Everything's working for them so far. Here's some settings. I want to go back into here because what I want to do is see if I can figure out how to get rid of these apps I don't use. So let's go ahead and see all apps. Now, here we go. Let's go to, I don't use Hulu. So there we go. There's uninstall. So that's one way that we can uninstall applications. Now, the other thing I want to do is I want to look at your apps again here. And when I pull that up, you can see there's another option for view details. And when I do that, then there is also an uninstall there. So you can uninstall apps a couple of different ways. So I'm glad I found that now. I'm going to go through and clean up my apps and get rid of the ones I don't need. Looking for the Zumo app. Here's Zumo on the Google Play Store. Thank you, Google Assistant. Here's the Zumo app. Again, this is another opportunity to uh, watch free live streaming TV. And we'll just kind of take a look here and see what's available. And you see they have their own guide. Now what I would like is, is that guide integrated into the live TV guide that we saw earlier with YouTube TV? Now I'm gonna go ahead and load up Pluto TV as well so that you can see their guide again. So now we've got three guides. We've got a YouTube TV guide, we've got a Zumo guide, and then we've got a Pluto guide. Now we're going to come back a little bit later and see if it integrates all those guides. But before we do, let's use those buttons. Let's hit that Netflix button on that remote. You'll see it loads Netflix, which as it, that's what it should do. It does remember my password from our Google Smart Locks. That's a nice feature to have. So now we're in Netflix. Now there's another button. It is the YouTube button. If you click the YouTube button on your remote, it loads YouTube by default. Now this button can actually be modified. You click and hold it down and then you get this screen, and then you can choose which YouTube application you want to be that YouTube TV button. Problem is, it doesn't work for the Netflix button, so that's something that needs to be fixed in a future release. You'll see here that our Zumo, our Pluto TV is not integrated into our YouTube TV list, which is a shame. So what I've done here is I've actually Chromecast my Android screen to the monitor that I'm connected to with the Chromecast. So you'll see this infinite loop thing. I just thought this was pretty cool, but this isn't the real reason I'm showing you this picture. Because what I wanna do now is focus on the brand new Google Play app for, in my case, Android. And on uh, my case, this is for the Pixel 4 XL. And as you can see, it's been, it's taken the Google Play movies and TVs app and rebranded it Google TV. It's designed to pull all those same features we just saw in Google TV on the Chromecast and bring that to our Android phone, such as a movies area, a shows area where we can purchase and rent. We can see our movies from our library. You'll notice this matches up exactly with the libraries that we saw on the Google TV on the Chromecast. You'll see my watch list. We talked about our watch list, those things that we want to watch that has been synced. These are all the different services. You can go ahead and add those here and those are going to show up also on your Google TV on Chromecast. So that's a neat little feature. Again, syncing up the two. And I assume we click on this, we can change our activity and uh, how Google uses our information. We also have settings that look a lot like what we saw back on the Google TV. And we can search for movies. In this case, I'm gonna search for Gettysburg and we can watch it on this device if we install Amazon Prime. And we can also add it to our watch list, which will be synced back to our watch list on Chromecast with Google TV. And that's my look at the Chromecast with Google TV, Google's latest product. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel and also check out my blog post at stephencombs.com. Thanks for watching.